everyone, this is Amir Tsarfati, and um, I think I owe you um, the completion of my update. So I'm, I'm sorry, there were some technical problems. Um, I'm not sure exactly why. I believe that there is uh, some attack from the outside uh, on on my um, account by uh, a group of people anonymous that are uh, pro-Palestinians some of them even try to sow some uh, confusion within the reaction or within the comments um, as you can see my life is not that easy with uh, lots of trolls that are emailing me and messaging me and calling me and uh, uh, writing me some very very bad things so uh, but it's it's okay you know if the truth has to be heard and um, only the truth can set people free so I know um, some of you might not be online but um, what I'm gonna do I decided not to give up uh, I changed the location, I change. I turn off the Wi-Fi of this hotel and so it's going to be on my, ch on my network and so I think things will work better right now. So um, allow me to pray again because this is a spiritual attack and then we will go back to our Middle East current events update. There's some things you need to know, things that are, everybody needs to know, and I believe that um, that may be why all of this uh, is happening. So, Father, I, I thank you that even through tribulations and troubles, difficulties, uh, we can see your good hand. And Father, we know that uh, if the world will ever love us, that means that we are in trouble. We know that we have nothing to do with this world. We know that uh, uh, we need to be transformed and not, not conformed to this world. Father, we know that so many people are blind. And just as the people of Israel were blind 2,000 years ago regarding their Messiah, and just as Paul himself prayed, uh, or even talked to the leaders of, of Israel and said, I have nothing by which I can accuse my nation because he understood the blindness. He was one of them. Father, I pray that uh, you will forgive all those that are trying to sabotage this whole ministry. <clears throat> we understand how blind they are. We were blind too. Forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. I pray that their eyes will be open to see uh, the wonders of your word the truth of your word the truth will set them free they're in bondage of hatred they're in bondage of of lie and deception from the pit of hell and father i pray that only the knowledge of the truth that will be communicated to them in love and yet in clarity only that can set them free so whoever was trying to sabotage this I pray for his salvation right now. I pray for his eyes to be open. I pray for him and his family and his loved ones. I thank you, Father, that we are able back again to look into world events, look into your word and smile because we can see how you perfectly orchestrate everything. We love you. We bless you. We praise your name. And we do that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, here I am back again. I'm not going to give up. Uh, whoever tried to stop this, it didn't work. And uh, we're going to start again. So, again, everyone, thank you for your prayers. Um, and um, we're going to start by looking into what happened in the last few days. Again, I do have a message on Facebook. We're going to erase it and we're going to upload this one because this will be the official Middle East current events update. And, um, and I will talk 
once again about what happened in the last few days. So, ladies and gentlemen, we all understand that Russia uh, did something uh, that is considered by the Americans and the Israelis as a game-changing act, and that is to send the um, air defense system, the ADS, called S-300. Make no mistake, folks, the S-300 was first invented in the 1970s. It is an old system. It was modified several times, but yet it is still old equipment that is com comprised of four different pieces. There is the piece that uh, is a radar that detects the, the takeoff of airplanes around or the, the launching of rockets around. There is another um, piece of radar that is actually calculating the velocity and the speed of whether it's the plane or the missile. And there's, of course, the component of the rockets and the launchers themselves. All those pieces were transported by big Antonov cargo planes to Syria in the last few days. We've watched it, we've seen it happening, and as of yesterday, the, the defense minister of Russia announced and reported to the president, to Vladimir Putin, that the S-300 components are on the ground. But what you don't know is that in order to operate it, you need first to assemble it. After you assemble it, you have to test it. After you test it, you have to teach those that are going to use it how to use it. Make no mistake, the S-300 almost never ever used in real time in war. So it's not a system that we know that works perfectly. It's not a system, but it is definitely something that um, we don't feel comfortable with. Israel already trained more than once because um, when the Greek had uh, uh, purchased the S-300, the Greek Air Force, and later on Greece became an ally of Israel, Israel started training um, with the radars of the S-300 in the hands of the Greek Navy um, already operated. And so we managed to use electronic warfare to bypass all of that, and we managed to do that successfully. But let me explain what happened, because, you know, we tend to look into the details but forget the big picture. The big picture of what is going on in Syria is a battle between empires. It's not just um, the rebels and the Syrians. People are taking advantage of all of these people. You have to understand that because of Russia is controlling the area of Latakia in the southern part of Syria, Russia felt violated by Israel because Israel managed skillfully to penetrate through all the air defense systems to all the most advanced radar systems to hit the target, turn around and leave. And when the R Syrians started spraying, uh, you know, with air defense systems and rockets and all of that, they actually managed to, to, to have a Russian rocket hitting a Russian civilians or reconnaissance planes and, and, and killed 15 crewmen. For the Russians, that was a real, real humiliation. So what did they do? Not only that they sent the S-300, and that was a statement. Folks, they talked about it more than they did something with it. It's a statement. But also, the Russians are right now having 90 days window to negotiate better terms with the Americans when it comes to whether to give it to the Syrians or not. It is on the ground, but are we going to train the Syrians or not? It takes at least three months. So within the next three months, Israel still can operate without fearing that the S-300 will, will touch them. But what, what Russia did right after the downing of the plane is taking advantage of the situation and creating or, or, or lowering what I call an iron curtain, not allowing any air traffic or sea traffic in, around, and within Syria. Basically, what the Russians 
are saying to the world is there is no more Syria, there is Russia. Anyone who wants to do anything in Syria has to be, get approval of Russia. Ladies and gentlemen, may I say Israel has no border with Syria anymore. Israel has border with Russia right now. That's the bottom line. Now, if Russia has imposed this Iron Curtain, America did so also. America, instead of, you know, if you remember, President Trump originally said we're pulling our troops out of Syria. In fact, the opposite is happening. America realized that the Iranian entrenchment is actually sabotaging them as well and their action as well. America has 2,000 soldiers on the ground in Syria and it is sending more troops. And America actually, John Bolton just said that uh, it's within our interest to, 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 to be there until this, the Iranian presence is over. So the Americans are on the eastern side of the Euphrates. The Russians are on the western side of the Euphrates. The Turks are on the northern part of Syria. And these are three sides that are basically blocking Syria. Now, why is it interesting? Here comes the point. It's interesting because Iran just lost its only possibility for a, a land bridge between Iran and the Mediterranean. That is why the Iranians are now only airlifting everything. And that is why it's easier for Israel to detect and attack whatever comes. It's no longer on the ground. All the land passages between Iran and Iraq to Syria are completely blocked. Now, President Trump just announced that he's about to um, remove the Patriot batteries, the missiles from Kuwait. Why? America officially, as of this month, is not buying a drop of oil from Kuwait for the first time in almost, I don't know, 40, 50 years, America is not depending anymore on Arab oil. America exports 20% of its oil, and that's 2 million barrels a day. Folks, that is why they don't have any interest in Kuwait anymore, and that is why they don't need to protect Kuwait anymore. The Jordanians heard also that the Patriot missiles that America has on their soil might be evacuated as well. The Jordanians are very scared. And that might be a signal of President Trump to the Jordanians that he demands that they will give the Palestinian refugees in Jordan equal rights to be assimilated so that whole idea of Palestinian refugee issue is going to be off the table for his ultimate peace deal. Very, very interesting. I also want to tell you folks that um, if that's not enough, remember one thing. Every time the Russians and the Syrians bombarded areas of the rebels, they allowed evacuation of the rebels up north to Idlib. Right now Idlib is protected because the Russians and the Turks reached an agreement. So a huge pocket of, of rebels is now in northern, in northern Syria. Syria, as of today, I would say this officially, ceased to exist. Russia controls 50% of it. America controls uh, about 30% of it. And Turkey controls about 20% of it. That reminds me of the days of the Cold War, when Russia used to control parts of Europe, and America and its allies used to control the western part of Europe. And, and, and that was the battle of the two giants of those days. That is what's happening right now. So Israel, as of now, is literally bordering not with Syria. It is Russian patrols, Russian military police, Russian flags that we're watching around. Now, let me now explain to you why prophetically it's amazing. Israel is okay with this Russian move. In fact, we could have not asked for anything better. Ever since the Russians took over the border, it's the quietest border. When was the last time you heard any incident on the border? 
When was the last time you heard any incident of something flying from Syria towards Israel? The Russians are there. They're the landlords right now. They're not allowing the Iranian militias. They're not allowing Hezbollah. They're not allowing anyone, allowing anyone there. So, in fact, what happened actually helped stabilizing the northern border of Israel. However, and now comes the amazing thing for those who love Bible prophecy. Within the effort to stabilize the northern border from Iranian entrenchment, from Hezbollah entrenchment, and from all of those elements, Israel agreed to allow Russia there. And Israel has allowed Russia to be on its border and when time will come, and, and, and it's only a matter of time until Russia will get hit by Israel intentionally or unintentionally in the effort of Israel to remove all threats, that's when the Russians will have no problem invading within minutes. Now, some people are asking me, Amir, why is it that you allow the Russians there? Well, the options are worse as of now. And remember... You and I cannot change prophecy. Ezekiel saw 2,800 years ago that the Russians will come. Ezekiel also saw that the Russians are not going to come to help the Palestinians or to help the Arabs. They're going to come to take spoils, to take booty, to, to plunder, to steal. It is about the spoils of war. The Russians made it very clear that them coming to Syria is about the spoils of war. When they cannot get it there in Syria, they will eventually take it in Israel. And that is very interesting. It's interesting how Syria is the, may I say, plane of Armageddon in a sense. Because if you Remember in Revelation 16, 16, it says, And they gather their troops in the place called in the Hebrew, Har Megiddo, Armageddon. So in Zechariah's war, which is the war after the tribulation, the plain of Megiddo will be the, 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 the um, assembling area of all the forces. Today, in preparation for the Ezekiel war, it is Syria that is playing that role of the, of the area where they mass all their forces as they prepare for that invasion. This is so amazing. It's so amazing because that may explain when Israel is going to watch this massing of forces, that may explain why Damascus will have to be destroyed, as um, Isaiah 17 says. Very, very interesting. So we see Iron Curtain from all sides. We see that it's all about um, America and 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 and, um, and 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 Russia, and we also see, folks, that um, both the Americans and the Russians really don't like the Iranians, and it's fine with us that we don't have to deal with that. The best thing that ever happened to Israel is that we didn't take side in this whole. Um, civil war in Syria, and, and, and we shouldn't take sides even now. Now, Angela Merkel is visiting Israel right now, the German Chancellor. One of the main reasons she's here is because uh, President Trump made it very clear to Merkel that if she wants America to, to, to help being an active member in NATO and protect Germany in case something happens from Russia, then Merkel should stop her plans of a pipe with Russia and start somehow planning things with Israel. Merkel visited several, uh, you know, apart from the Holocaust memorial that she visited today, she also had a chance to see with Prime Minister Netanyahu some uh, latest in Israeli innovations, and she was stunned. Uh, but she also had to sit and talk about um, the possibility of Israeli gas supply all the way to Western Europe. Amazing. Again, one more piece in the whole aspect of the reason why Gog, the chief of the Prince of Magog, will want to come against us. Germany is its prime customer in, in Western Europe. 
If he loses Germany to Israel, then Israel will have to pay the price. This is, that is going to be unforgettable for them. Um, I just wrote a piece, and I know some people, I don't know why they became so angry. Um, the arch of, ba of Baal, which is the Palmyra arch that is right now in front of DC, it's a traveling exhibit that started actually in London, went to Dubai, continued in New York City, and now it's in DC. I believe that the, the timing is not a coincidence. You know, Baal, um, definitely a pagan god. Um, um, I believe that right now when the battle for the nomination of, of another Supreme Court justice is there, to put that one there is almost like a statement saying, you know, we don't really abide by the law or the rules of God Almighty, but we have other gods. However, remember, that arch is not only about America. That arch traveled around the world. That arch is not even the real one. It's just a replica. It's a statement. Um, I believe that what you need to pay attention to is the fact that the real altar of Zeus, known in, in Revelation 2.12 uh, as the seat of Satan, is located in Berlin, Germany. Europe is hosting the seat of Satan and one of the gates of Babylon, the gate of Ishtar, in the Pergamon Museum. So, once we talk about a European influence in, in, you know, in, in the liberalism that's coming from Europe influ influencing America, we have to remember, America, as of a few days ago, has a president that said to the whole world, America is not embracing globalism. America is embracing patriotism. And that's what makes Europe angry. And all those wealthy families, all those illuminated um, people who think that, that they know that they see the light and they know how to govern and the people don't know anything. All those people understand that they must shift their efforts. If they cannot move President Trump, they must shift their effort to continue everything in Europe. And Europe is just sending always, uh, you know, a reminder to America what, what it wants America to be. But I want to tell you something, folks. America rejected globalism when it voted in 2016. And America can and should reject globalism once again in the, Co in the Co uh, Kavanaugh um, um, vote for justice in a few days. I personally believe that if he's not going to be approved, that will affect the, the Republicans in the midterm elections and that will affect the presidential elections as well. All that they fought for can just go for nothing if they will allow that scam to succeed. Last thing I want to say is this. Um, I want to tell you that one of, the, one of the things that is really heavy on my heart right now, because we're in the last days, this is the last hour, I believe there's a lot of Christians that are in bondage of... of um, the, what I call the Jesus plus movement. You know, you can believe, you have to believe in Jesus, but you also have to do or to be this, 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 and this. And that leads me to prepare two new messages right now, which I will probably share either in, in the Philippines in January, or maybe even earlier when I'm in um, Amsterdam or in Slovenia. Uh, one is should Gentiles keep the law, to keep the Mosaic law. It's a question that uh, a lot of people are asking, and I'm going to tackle that. A whole message on Acts chapter 15, and then the next message I'm working on, folks, is the book of life. What is the book of life? Is your name in the book of life? Is your name in the book, in the Lamb's book of life? Can your name be blotted off the Lamb's Book of Life or the other Book of Life? Are there two books of life? A lot of people are confused about that. 
So I'm preparing a message just to clarify all of that. People are afraid. People are terrified. You see, the enemy wants to tell you that faith in Christ is not enough. The enemy wants to tell you that you'll never be able to be good enough. I heard a testimony. I heard a testimony of, of, a of, of a someone who came from a Jewish believing family who decided not to believe anymore because he thought that you can either be cold or warm but not look warm and he, he, cannot, he cannot really live up to the standards of Jesus. That's baloney. Jesus, if we were to be first perfect and then become believers, then none of us would have been a believer. The idea is that sinners can come and be saved by grace only through faith and faith alone. And when we are saved and when the Holy Spirit is in us, that's when the work is done from the inside. When He is in control of us, then you know what happened? I tell you what happened. We're becoming a new creation. Behold, all things, the old things are gone and, and we're becoming new. We, the renewal of the mind is happening. Suddenly we see things differently. We do things differently. The Holy Spirit is telling us what to do and what not to do. The Holy Spirit is not waiting for you to be perfect and then go in and dwell in you. This is a lie from the pit of hell. So I'm going to tackle some of those things because we need to understand these are the last days and we have to have confidence in our salvation and we have to... How can we testify of, the, of our salvation and, and how, how can we be witnesses in this world when we ourselves aren't sure if we're saved? So, you know, Jesus says, these things I tell you, Sue, you will know that you have eternal life. So it's important that we understand that. So we're going to talk about that. And, and it's not about be good and do good. We have to repent. We have to acknowledge our sinful nature. We have to repent of it. We have to turn around and we have to, of course, fellowship with Him um, because all have fallen short of the glory of God. And we are only saved by grace and by grace alone. And not through works, lest anyone will boast. We have to remember that. There's so many people around that are just confusing the flock, telling them that you still have to do this, 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 and this. And then, of course... By doing so, um, confusing the flock. There's another great deception regarding Israel. People think that God abolished His covenant with Israel because Israel is not perfect or godly. Well, let me tell you something. Israel never was perfect or godly even in the past when God chose them. In fact, when God chose them, He said, not because of who you are, I choose you. But because of my, my promise and my covenant with your forefathers. And I want to tell you, the Lord is not done with Israel. And Israel eventually will be on its knees, acknowledging its offense, going through a horrible tribulation. But Israel is going to be saved. God is not done with them. When we're out of here, He's going to deal with them. His focus will shift to them. That's the last seven years. This is the last week of the 70 weeks of Daniel. That's when the Antichrist is going to um, rule. This is when Armageddon is going to happen. This is where so many things. We're going to be out of here. That's going to be all about Israel. And it's for them um, to eventually be saved. So there's a lot of confusion. And this confusion is not just because people are biblically ignorant. There's, it's a spiritual deception. It's a spiritual warfare that we have to tackle and we have to understand that it's there. And, and, and it's just saddening. This is it, folks. Um, we will talk again. Again, I, I had the most awesome time in America. Thousands of people came to the conferences that we had both in Tustin and in, in Chino Hills and in East Anaheim in Idaho. We had hundreds of people coming literally from, I don't know, more than 15 different states, including Canada. And then, of course, the um, 
the uh, grand finale was the Understanding the Times conference of Jan Markell and Olive Tree Ministries where um, more than 5,000 people showed up and hundreds of thousands of people watched online through live stream. And uh, then, of course, I ended up uh, speaking at Friendship Church where they also had a full house of um, almost 1,500 people combined in two services. It was amazing. The Lord had blessed and... Um, and the message was very clear. We live in the days of the fig tree blooming and we are the generation that shall not pass. The Lord put on my heart also to teach on the Antichrist, although we are not going to see him. At least we need to understand what this term is all about. Who, why, when, and how, and all of that. You can find all those teachings already on YouTube, free of charge. And uh, follow us on YouTube, Facebook, I'm, I use Twitter heavily, every day, a few times a day. Follow Behold Israel on Twitter. And so you can be informed. There's a lot of things that are happening every day. I want to keep you, uh, um, keep you um, posted with everything. The Canadians, we've got a date for the Canada conference. The Canada conference is going to be on May 11th. We will give you the, the exact uh, details and we will announce the opening of the registration when the time comes. Uh, it will be an online registration. We'll let you know the link and everything. It's going to be Jack Hibbs, Barry Stagner, and, and myself, and Jan Markell herself is going to come and share with us as well. So we're very, very excited about this. Folks, thank you and God bless you. And we're going to end up this update with the ironic blessing and when i bless you with the ironic blessing it's not that i bless you as a priest that is blessing non-priest all of us in christ are kingdom of priests and we are all as we hear that blessing we can also bless that blessing uh, other people Isa Adonai panav lecha veyasem lecha shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine His face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance towards you and may He give you His shalom, His peace. This peace that Israel doesn't have and the world doesn't have. And if you are a sinner, you don't have that peace. That peace that surpasses all understanding. It's a peace that the world cannot give you, nor that the world can even understand. If you don't know Jesus, Jesus said, These things I tell you that in me you will find peace. In this world you will find tribulation and be of good cheer. I have overcome this world. So the Lord wants to give you His peace. You just need to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. And know that He is your peace. He is our reconciliation. He made us new creation. He broke the wall of separation. He took the power of sin away. Death means nothing to us anymore. For us to live means Christ to die is gain. We are citizens of the heavenlies awaiting His return watching and seeing that day is approaching, trusting and knowing that He who promised is indeed faithful. We thank you, Father, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. I love you. God bless you. We did not allow the enemy to win this time. And um, if anything happens, I'll keep updating you. Thank you. Tomorrow we're going to have a group of 40 people coming to Israel to, and I'll take them to what we call Bible Experience Tour. I'm going to teach Bible every site, every location. It's going to be awesome. And uh, we're looking forward to be able to financially afford more and more scholarships. We want to change the world. We want to bring young adults to Israel from countries where they cannot afford so they can go back home with their mind renewed with their faith strength, uh, strengthened and, and with their love for God deepened. And, and we also want to bring pastors and wives that cannot afford an Israel tour. I believe a visit to Israel equals to years of Bible um, um, seminary. I believe that um, 
we want to expose Israel to pastors and wives so they can go back home to their um, parishes and communities and churches and preach not just the good news, but the truth. The truth only can set people free. So we rely heavily on your kindness and, and of course, uh, your support for those type of scholarships. Thank you. God bless you. And Shalom from Tel Aviv, Israel. Bye-bye.